So this is, um, this is Alex's green screen project. And I wanted to just go over a couple last final little touches with you guys that I think really, really, really matter. Um, first off, let's just kind of look at what we've got here. Um, oh, now I wasn't in the program. There we go. Uh, so if I just <coughs> subtract this. So we did a couple of really cool things with this uh, green screen when we were, uh, project when we were working on it. And um, so let's just go through here and I will um, turn some things off here so you guys, guys can kind of see what we've done. Um, so she's got, uh, <coughs> okay, so we need that, turn those off. So she's got this project here <coughs> and she's got this guy and he's talking uh, and then he shoots, he, he pulls the arrow back. Come on, keep up. Oh dear. So he pulls back and then she jumps out of the way the last second here as he shoots the arrow. Okay, nice and fun and simple, okay? Um, <clears throat> but not as simple as you think. So, you know, obviously beyond the green screening and everything like that that she's done, <clears throat> we realized that there were a couple other things that needed to be done with it. Um, <clears throat> and the first thing that was really big, and you can really see this um, here, is the change in color. So when you're using the tungsten-based lights that are in the room, or the fluorescent lights that are in the room, um, they put a color cast on the person's skin. Okay, and you can see that she does not look like she fits at all. And the reason for that is because of the color cast, one of the reasons, not the only reason, but one of the reasons is because of the color cast of her skin. Those lights have changed her skin uh, big time. <coughs> <clears throat> so there's a really great, there's a couple really great special effect filters that, well just filters, not really special effects, just filters that allow you, oh I can go full screen with this app, cool, um, <clears throat> that allow you a little bit, uh, a, a lot of really cool flexibility in order to color balance your, um, your person so that they fit into the environment that they're in. So if you go to the filters and you go to color correction, you'll see there's a whole bunch. And one's color balance. And the color balance is really easy. I'm going to drag this over. Well, actually, I've already got one. <clears throat> and so if I click on it, we'll just turn it on and watch the difference that it makes. See that? That's pretty impressive. That's very impressive, the change that you make immediately to that with the color balance. So let's drag a new one in here. And I'll, 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 uh, I'll do this in front of you so you can kind of see what we're, how it works. So I'm going to drop this on the clip, and then I'm going to go to the inspector. <coughs> and yes, I've already got another one, so I'll hide that for a second. And so with the color balance, you have these three um, uh, controls, well, these three main controls here. And then you can also animate them, which is pretty cool. Um, although I think most of the time you won't need to do that, but you can create keyframes with this little plus symbol. So that's what that little plus symbol is. Whenever that shows up, that means you can animate uh, whatever you're doing. So <clears throat> what you can do, the easiest way in my opinion to be using this is to, um, <clears throat> to go over here and you just click on one. So the first thing that I like to balance out is my highlights. That's the easiest. And if you look at that right now, the highlights are really what's messed up on this the most. Because where her shirt should be pure white is just orangey, grayish colored. Okay? So not only do we have bad color cast, but we have bad contrast as well. And this will help us get rid of that. So I'm going to click on this, and a little wheel will pop up. <clears throat> so this wheel, I can drag it over here, and we can zoom in a little bit on the screen here, so you guys can see what I'm doing. If I slide the slider up and down, the first thing that that does is that actually increases my, um, my contrast. So it's lightening my highlights, which is a nice little uh, thing that you can do. I didn't expect that with a color balancer, okay, that you could actually increase your contrast with a color balancer. But it's really nice because then you can do everything you need to do in one uh, filter instead of adding a contrast filter or using the levels or whatever. You can do that basically in 
your color balance filter. The other thing that you need to do is then kind of look at your color cast and see what's happening and what color that is. And so what I'm looking at is it's really an orangey color, okay, that her skin tone is, is rather orangey and so the tones on her jacket, or, or not her jacket, but her shirt. So I'm going to then take the little slider and very slowly I'm going to push it towards the other side. You can see very quickly how it's slowly changing the cast. Now I didn't go very far. You don't need to. This is not, this is a subtle thing. Color balancing is subtle. You don't want to do that. Okay, you don't need to be over there. Down in here, just in the first couple levels of the cyan bluish, are going to take my orangey color away from her skin. And I can slide it around the wheel a little bit until I really feel like I've got a good skin tone. But what I'm really looking for is I'm looking at the neutral colors in anything that I know is white. So I, you know, I, got, I caught a lucky break here that she's got a white shirt on. If the person has a colored shirt, you look for any kind of highlight, hopefully, that you might have where you can say, this is a neutral and I need to do this. But since I got a white shirt, that made my job a little e easier. Because if I go off a little bit, you can see now she's got a green cast to her. And if I go too much this way, you can see now she's starting to go purple. But if I just stay in this cyan bluish area, the color cast becomes really pretty good. And sometimes it's important to lighten things first before you do the color cast. Because if your image has really low contrast, here it's kind of hard to see whether I've done the color casting correctly or not. But if I lighten it a little bit, now it becomes a little bit more evident. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we do the same thing for each set of colors. So we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. So now I'm going to click on my midtones. And again, I can kind of lift up the midtones a little bit and brighten her up just a touch in the middle areas. And now that I've done the highlights, honestly, I don't need to do as much with the mids as far as the color balance is current concerned, just a touch of cyan. But if I go too far, easily you can start seeing like almost like the cyan halo around her. That's little bits left of the green screen and some other stuff. So if I'm not careful, I can really mess that up. And I, I, what I'm really looking for <clears throat> is that her skin tone is approximating his skin tone. And you see that the highlights here are blasted out on his hand a little bit because of the strong contrast of the sun. So I might go back to my highlight and lift it up even more with the attempt of kind of blasting out the highlights a little bit to make her look like she's in that same direct sunlight that he has. And then I might just add a touch of blue to the um, shadows. But if I go too much, you can see she really starts to look uh, kind of sickly blue. So I want to be very careful. And then I'm actually going to take my, my shadows down just a touch because when you're in direct sunlight, your shadows are harsher as well. So you want your shadows down a little bit and your highlights up a little bit in this case. Of course, every situation you get in is different. So the real issue here is making sure you analyze your background footage and you want to match your green screen footage to your background footage. This is the area where special effects fall flat most of the time, is the lighting does not match, specifically the blacks. When you see a movie like a bad movie on sci-fi, like Sharknado or any of those others, okay, where you can really tell that the sharks aren't real or any of those other really bad monster movies, is, is when you look at the shadows. The shadows will be either lighter or have a slightly, slightly different color to them uh, than the shadows that are in the background. And the reason for that is they are hurrying. They are not paying a lot of money for the special effects. And so the guy who's dropping them in and doing the compositing like you're doing here doesn't take a ton of time to match the colors. And that's really what it comes down to. Um, <clears throat> that and texturing. You know, from an animation standpoint, good textures make something look really real. Like in Transformers or something, those things are amazing, what they do with Transformers. But that's why that movie costs hundreds of millions of dollars, is because they paid the guys at ILM probably half of that or more, because of all the special effects. <clears throat> so anyway, once you get that kind of down, you can close that. 
now you've got a good color balance set. Um, and let's just see what I just did versus what... So that's what, you, that's what we did earlier. Yeah, the original's a little better. <clears throat> but you get the idea. So now, the other thing that's missing... Well, actually, let me ask you. What's the other thing that's missing here to make her look like she really belongs in the shot? There's a major, major thing. Yes, shadows. Now, shadows can be very difficult to do. Extraordinarily difficult to do. But with this one, they were easy because the shadows, if you look at your background video footage, they're really sharp, very directional shadows. <clears throat> the other problem is she's moving a lot, and so her shadow has to move. So the best thing you can do to create a shadow is use her. So what we did is we duplicated her layer. So let's just go up here, and we'll, we'll do, and we had to do two. There's really two shadows we had to do, one for the ground and one for the target. So let's just look at the ground one uh, for a second here. Let's open that up. I'm going to turn off um, something here. <clears throat> So here's her shadow for the ground. And you can see it's going in the right direction, but obviously it's way too big. We'll deal with that in a second. So um, what I have on here, just to start with, is I just duplicated it. <clears throat> so it came with the color balance and the keyer. But then what I did is I took the color balance filter and I reset all of the levels down to black. So I just took them and I drag the value all the way down. So if I lift that up, you'll see those colors coming back in. But I took them all down to black, and then that wasn't quite enough because you can still see some reds in there and stuff like that. So then I added a brightness filter here, and that brightness filter, I took the brightness all the way down, and then we had, you know, pure black. Then I added a Gaussian blur to blur the edges of the shadow just slightly. So you can kind of see that right there. Oh, did I? Oh, I turned on the other shadow. We don't want that. So you can kind of see with the Gaussian blur, turn that on and off. You can see the edge sharpen up a little bit. So I had that on there. But lastly, what we needed to do is we needed to make sure that the shadow didn't get on the target because that was not the right angle for the target shadow, right? So, oh, and what I did is I took the whole layer, by the way, and I skewed it. So you can grab, you can grab the top, um, and you can, you can start to distort things. And so I grabbed the top of it and I, and I skewed it with the tool that I use, the distort tool right here. So you can grab the distort tool and you can change the angle. See that? And you can skew the, uh, the video, which is cool because, and it's really important to do it that way because you need her feet to match up. That was, that was the hard part originally. You can't just rotate it. You have to skew it or else the feet don't match up. <clears throat> so let's put that back. So then the last thing we did is a Bezier mask. So we did a mask here and you can see it. That kind of just goes right here and, be, and it was really easy because the camera's not moving. If the camera's moving, you have to do another match move on your mask so that the mask moves with the camera. But here we didn't have to and so what that does is it takes her shadow and it clips it so that it's only showing up on the ground and not the target. So if we take a look at that, I could soften it a little bit. I probably should bring it down because you can kind of see it here. <clears throat> so there we've got, and you can see the shadow. And obviously the bow is underneath her. She's already done that uh, too, where she very carefully animated a mask where she took the bow and the string and animated it so that the bow is in front of the body. But we're going to turn those off again so we can see what she did with the shadow. Um, so now we've got the shadow and then as she's moving, the shadow moves with her. Pretty cool. Okay. Now actually what's funny is when she jumps out here she loses her shadow. <laughs> so we might have to modify our mask a little bit so that the shadow comes back. Uh, as she goes out of this area, but that's, that's a little minor thing. 
you can see what's cool is the shadow moves with her as she's going like this. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool, okay? Um, so then we just duplicated her again, for, and we realized there needed to be a shadow on the target here, and that it needed to match up a little differently, and so we have a second shadow here to turn that on, and the same thing, we have a color balance and a brightness filter on there. And we just did a straight up shadow. And then we added a Bezier mask that is the same as the um, target, or pretty close to the same as the target. And so now, as she's moving, the shadow's only on the target there, too. And then when she jumps out, it moves with her. That's pretty slick. That's pretty cool. And all we would need to do is modify the mask on the bottom shadow so that it would allow her shadow to go all the way back behind the target here. And then we wouldn't have to do anything much there. We just modify that mask and we're good to go. So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do to really make the green screen look better. But the two most important ones that you can do whenever you're compositing video is number one, you have to color balance. You've got to match your contrast and you've got to match your color balance itself, the tones of the lighting that's on the green screen shot so that it matches the background uh, video. And then the third thing that's really important is your shadows. Second thing, how did I jump to third? Your second thing that's really important is the shadows. Okay, and you've got to make sure that those shadows don't fall on objects that they're not supposed to, and for that you use masking. If you had to do motion matching techniques, well, if you already did the motion matching on her, when you duplicated her and brought her in to make the shadows, that motion matching should come with it. So you probably shouldn't have to do anything additional when you're adding the shadows. Um, and then the other thing is, and this is really simple, but just be mindful of this, the order that the layers are in is the order that they show up. So whatever layers on top is on top and so on and so forth. I probably don't have to say that or really shouldn't, but I'm going to anyway just so that you guys remember that. Um, it's really important you layer everything in the appropriate order so you get that. So does this all make sense? Okay, so we want to be making these things look as good as possible since we're spending a little extra time on them. Got it? Get it? Got it? Good.